How about nothing at all? Find out what we mean after the CBS Wednesday movie tonight on News Channel 12 at 10. Watching News Channel 12 at noon with Stephanie Strickland and meteorologist Matt Scott with your Storm Team 12 forecast. News Channel 12 is coverage you can count on. Thank you for joining us, everyone. More police and National Guard troops are in Seattle after violent protests over the World Trade Organization meeting. President Clinton is set to address that meeting today, and city officials have vowed that things are going to be much different. Drew Levinson has this afternoon's big story. The protests began early this morning, and so did the arrests, as the mayor announced the peace would be maintained. We are also anticipating there will be some more efforts today, but our responses will be swift and that anybody who engages in criminal conduct will be dealt with appropriately. A curfew was imposed overnight, and the National Guard was called up to help keep the peace. But that did not stop these protesters from storming a coffee shop, breaking windows, and setting fires outside. Yesterday, chemical gas was set off in Seattle streets to break up unruly crowds. Today, police promise a new strategy to control any violence. They're cutting off a core area of downtown to protesters. That'll be roughly from uh, Virginia Street on the north to Seneca Street on the south, from 4th Avenue on the west to the freeway, and prohibit any demonstrations within that core area for the remainder of the week. The demonstrations are calling attention to an organization very few people probably knew existed. The World Trade Organization sets trade policy and boasts member nations worldwide. President Clinton, who is in favor of free trade, arrived in Seattle overnight. He's scheduled to speak to the delegates later today. The National Guard, as well as about 300 state troopers, have been called in to help what has become a very exhausted Seattle Police Department. Drew Levinson, CBS News, Seattle. More than 60 people were arrested during yesterday's protest. A dozen have been arrested so far today. And Matt Scott joins us. I bet for once, city leaders wish it would rain in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, anything to calm Hard. down the, the people. A absolutely. The protests, yeah. Here's a quick quiz for you. Okay. You got Jackson. You got Denver, Mile High City, as you know. Okay. Okay. We're way who, across the country here. Who had the cooler temperature this morning? I'm guessing by the fact that you're asking, <laughs> Jackson. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Wasn't even close, by the way. Denver's really? low this morning, 40 degrees. Jackson, if you were outside this morning, 27. What's up with that? Fear not, we're warming it up nicely. It's not bad out there today. 55, our current reading order, warming up to 62 later on. And there's some warmer temperatures for coming up tomorrow morning. So if you were freezing like I was this morning, that's done for now. Of course, I'm sure we'll have more coming up in the wintertime, but we'll talk about what's in store for the weekend coming up in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Matt. It's going to be a tough holiday for a homeowner in Brandon. An off-duty firefighter spotted smoke on his way to work this morning. He called the Brandon Fire Department, and despite the fact that they responded within four minutes, the trailer burned to the ground. The homeowner was not in the trailer when the fire started, and no one was injured. The fire is under investigation, and fire officials do suspect arson. Two men killed in a weekend helicopter crash have been identified. Neshoba County officials say that Robert Smith and Hank Landrum died in that crash. Smith was a pilot and Landrum was a mechanic employed by Houston Helicopter Incorporated of Houston, Texas. The cause of the crash is still being investigated, but so far a probable cause is a mechanical failure of the main tail rotor. Some good news for former Jackson City Council President Louis Armstrong after his reduced sentence was denied yesterday. Federal prosecutors now say they will not pursue charges against him in the 1998 firebombing of the Jackson Advocate newspaper. Armstrong is currently serving jail time on bribery and extortion charges. Clinton Moses, who has pled guilty to the firebombing, had said that Armstrong paid him to toss burning bottles of gasoline into the office of the newspaper. The U.S. Supreme Court takes up a case today to determine whether or not the Food and Drug Administration has the legal authority to regulate tobacco products. Covering America, the tobacco industry says the FDA does not have the authority to regulate tobacco. They think regulation would lead to an eventual ban of smoking. But the federal government says smoking is the leading cause of cancer and the FDA needs to regulate it because nicotine is a habit-forming drug. A ruling is expected by July. 
The search has expanded for as many as 100 victims possibly killed by a Mexican drug cartel. Covering the world, agents from the United States, FBI, and Mexican government officials are now examining suspected mass grave sites at two ranches. The area near the U.S. border is known by the territory of the once powerful Juarez drug cartel. So far, two bodies have been recovered. Well, almost 200 countries are observing the 12th annual World AIDS Day. 16 million people have died from the disease. 33 million suffer from AIDS now. In India, hundreds of school children marched to help spread public awareness of the disease, and about 200 AIDS activists demonstrated in front of the White House yesterday. They say U.S. trade policy makes it hard for people in developing nations to afford AIDS drugs. Can a document make a difference in life and death? We're going to tell you about living trust in a moment. First, though, to tell us whether we should trust him with the weather, Matt Scott joins us in the forecast. Well, gee, we all know the answer to that one, don't we? Don't we? Thank you. We have a kind of iffy forecast for the weekend, but we're trying to improve it as much as possible, and I think we're moving in the right direction. We're going to talk about that and have a look at it right after this. Today on News Channel 12 at 5. And I just looked at him with this look, thinking there's no way that just magnets are going to do this. Learn in our Medical Watch how magnets help Karen stop an embarrassing problem that you might share with her. Today after Oprah on News Channel 12 at 5. Rogers Usry Chevrolet is your colossal used car center. All makes and models. Lots of...